As the layers of abstraction get piled onto our software solutions, we have lost sight of what is going on at the base. We no longer understand exactly what our hardware is doing when we type an abstracted command into our editor. The lack of understanding about programming and the underlying hardware will cause systemic decay and potential collapse of important infrastructure in the future. Modern programs are slow despite the yearly hardware improvements. This can be seen quite evidently if you just open up something like Slack. We have programs built on top of web technologies running in desktop environments. Because of this shift in technology, more and more programmers are learning and using particularly abstract languages and frameworks. The general argument is that computers nowadays are fast enough that the stack does not matter. This leads to almost zero consideration about hardware limitations, memory management, and CPU usage. These skills are not being refined in the general course of a programmer's career, and therefore are becoming less prevalent, less sought after, and less known about. In 2020, the five most sought after programming languages are JavaScript sitting at 53.6%, Python at 49.5%, Java at 44.1%, C Sharp at 19.7%, and finally, the first non garbage collected language is C at 18.3%. The highest salaries are all for garbage collected languages, giving less incentive to become truly proficient in non garbage collected languages. The top five languages for salary are Perl, Scala, Go, Ruby, and Objective C. The version of Objective-C is not known, so it may or may not be garbage collected. In either case, the point remains that programmers are less incentivized to learn about the lower levels of their craft, happy to let the languages sort it out for them. From a business perspective, the standardization of programming paradigms through the widespread adoption of particular frameworks is highly beneficial. The more people who know how to use these frameworks to build software, the easier it is to replace employees. Some companies may even hire experienced programmers at a high rate to build the initial software, and then fire them and replace them with lower wage maintainers. This is facilitated very nicely by mass adoptions of frameworks. As the flavor of the month frameworks change, and programmers ignore the fundamentals in favor of learning these new frameworks, we will see a decline in the availability of programmers knowledgeable enough to maintain legacy systems. This effect will carry over to said frameworks in a decade or two, resulting in a cascading failure of software applications. It will be the case that if the current trend continues, we will find ourselves in a time in which nobody alive can understand how our infrastructure works and it will slowly degrade and collapse. This has happened several times in the past. These events are commonly called dark ages. This was demonstrated when Texas Instruments started shipping DOA processors. When asked about what was going on, they stated that the designers of these processors had left the company and that the new staff lacked the deep knowledge required to correctly produce these processes. The fact that anybody can do a 12 week boot camp and get a job as a programmer and do well is alarming. This means that the heavy burden of understanding what is going on under the hood is falling on only a few people as well as the automated software pillars we have come to rely on. Because it is not required to know anything about the hardware one is working on in order to succeed in the field, programmers simply do not learn about it unless they are keenly curious or are specifically told to do so. This leads to a lack of consideration and planning in regards to how written code will interface with the hardware it is being written for.
Many pieces of software are created with a driving ideology behind them, which enforce the way they are structured and create problems for the programmer to solve which are only there due to the dogmatic approach. Designing a whole piece of software around the core idea that is decided beforehand can lead to critical issues. Focusing efforts on upholding these arbitrary frameworks and pushing square pegs into round holes causes a lack of understanding about how to solve difficult problems efficiently. The digital dark age is approaching, which is the degradation of data over time. For us, this seems like a strange idea. The idea we might not have access to the information we have at our fingertips right now. However, history has shown us that the collapse of a civilization and loss of knowledge can happen quickly or it can happen slowly without anyone realizing it. For an example of the slow degradation of society and loss of knowledge, look no further than the collapse of the Western Roman Empire. The civilization was in decline for some 300 years with people in the capital convinced that it will get better soon. There is no way Rome can fall. This is, of course, a naive way of thinking and it is all too human to fall into this trap. The late Bronze Age collapse of the cultures around the Mediterranean Sea during the 12th century is a prime example of the quick degradation of four kingdoms and total destruction of 33 cities, which were all previously prospering due to their advanced trading network. The half century between 1200 BC and 1500 BC saw the collapse of the Mycenaean kingdoms, of the Kassite dynasty of Babylonia, of the Hittite Empire in Anatolia and the Levant, and the Egyptian Empire, the destruction of the Ugarit and the Amorite states in the Levant, the fragmentation of the Luwian states of Western Asia Minor, and a period of chaos in Canaan. The collapse of these civilizations is thought to be a combination of natural disasters, drought, and scarcity of tin, which was imported from Afghanistan. The complexity of the cultures and their economic and social organizations was such that it became impossible for the survivors to re-establish themselves and plunge this part of the world into a dark age. A similar situation could befall us. A significant solar flare like the one which almost hit Earth in July 2012, or a nuclear detonation in the atmosphere could send out a large enough electromagnetic pulse to wipe out all data on the face of the Earth. Knowledge about how to rebuild our technology would be vital in this situation. Pursuing mastery of programming is important for the future, but it comes at a cost. Becoming a master requires a tremendous amount of time, most of which will not be in the workplace as the current trends of abstracted technology continue to increase. It will be harder in the meantime to be paid as well for your efforts as they are counter to the ideal lackey mentality which businesses are generally looking for. There will always be a place for truly dedicated individuals and master programmers will be needed more than ever in the coming decades to help with the aforementioned dysfunctional critical systems. It is important to remember that human knowledge lives in the mind of humans, and if it is not passed on, it can easily be lost. Digital data is not immune to the effects of entropy, natural disaster, or intentional destruction. If you are one of those people looking to truly master programming, make sure to understand the hardware and runtime environments, as well as any lower level language concepts like memory management and CPU caching. Consider learning the assembly language and reading the specification for the target architecture to speed up critical systems. Deep understanding about these topics will be required in the future. It is only a matter of time and complexity until the abstract house of cards comes falling down.